thankful, get a job or get your money back. Thankful is a service that is actually going to teach you how to become a developer. Their programs, unlike coding boot camps that charge a fortune, they don't charge you anything until you actually get a job. Everything is deferred. They're building the world's next workforce and they're working around your schedule. They have programs in software engineering, data science, product design, data analytics, and product management. So if you guys are looking to break into this industry in a risk-free way, check out Thankful. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, what we're gonna be talking about is how to learn programming as quickly as possible. And a lot of people ask this question because they're looking for the easy way out. I'm assuming like just trying to figure out, hey, what do I focus on and get a job? And the thing is, it's always a moving goal. So as soon as you get comfortable with something, some new hotness is coming around. But there are certain paradigms of programming that you want to focus on depending on what you want to do. If you're into machine learning data science, you're going to learn Python. If you're into video gaming, you're going to learn C Sharp with something like Unity. If you're into web development, you have really a ton of options, but you might as well just start with something like with Node because any sort of website in Node uh, is going to transfer over to your client side code. So you might as well just learn Node and just focus on the JavaScript aspect of it. And the quickest way, though, to learn how to program and what a lot of people I, I don't think tell you is that y you don't waste your time like learning things you don't need to know. And to know what you shouldn't learn is, uh, is a skill to have, I think. A lot of senior devs, you know, they're, they're like, oh, some new technology or, okay, I see it does this and that. And they're like, well, I'm not going not gonna to fuck with that. I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing because until somebody pays me to do that, then I'm not going to uh, jump all up into that. I I've talked to so many different senior devs that are like that. I mean, one of the things that you always want to guard as the most precious in your life really is your time. You don't get your time back. And wasting time on technologies that are going to die in three to four years, especially before you can hit the job market in many cases, uh, it's kind of a waste of time. So in general, something like Django, right? I learned that 10 years ago. Even to this day, I still use Django. I write web apps in Django. I'm a web developer, though. So I've been doing web development for 10 years. So all this stuff that I mostly focus on, unless it's me just tinkering around because I sometimes like to program I, I have that 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 trait you know i think it's a, a trait that good developers have is that you know they have an actual interest in programming but those you know that interest i think goes up and down sometimes for me uh, I, i've gone through burnout and um i think really what gets me out of it is working on other things so i'm not focused on the, the same things um, but a lot of times it's just simply not working at all so i'm not working on any coding project at home uh, but other times I get back in my mojo, you know, you get like, uh, for instance, I, I, I got a job offer recently where it was like 35,000 more than I'm making currently. And um, I actually turned that down. It's actually not 35,000 when all is said and done. The um, these uh, these salary stru structures and programming can be really confusing sometimes because many places, you know, it's it's all about benefits. It's about work life balance, time off. It's about uh, bonus structures and it's also about working for reliable companies that you feel like are going to be around for a long time. One of the things for me, I don't like startups, like the startup culture for the most part, because I'm getting a little too old for that. If I'm going to do a startup, it's going to be my own startup. It's not somebody else's vision that I'm going to bust my ass for. Um, and that's where, you know, those are the type of jobs too. They can be really exciting and you wear lots of, you know, hats. You're wearing like database hat and web development, network security, all this stuff. You're doing all this stuff, but you're not really honing your skills in on one particular thing. So you're kind of like a, um, a jack of all trades and a master of none. So how do you become a master in something? Like, I think honestly, if you guys are trying to get a job and you don't have a job and you're talking about, should I go to school or not? I mean, for sure you should go to school because that school is going to be, uh, it's going to help you your whole life. Because honestly, I can tell you, I've been personally turned down for jobs. Even 10 years into this gig, I've been turned down for jobs and people say it's a DC area thing and I think they're wrong. There are certain companies that you cannot work for. You cannot be a manager. You cannot be a lead if you don't have a, uh, a, a, a computer science degree. In some cases, you can get other types of degrees and that'll pass for it. But a lot of places, you just don't have that opportunity without your degree. Now, is that worth getting a degree for? Probably not. I mean, right now, it seems like the landscape is like, 
Well, if you can get in without getting a degree, a, a degree you're better off because you save yourself a hundred thousand dollars in four years of time at a minimum. But I think that this market changes a lot. We saw the 2008 recession that didn't hit tech too hard, but some people say we're in a tech bubble now. We certainly were in the late 90s, and if something like the late 90s happened again. Um, you see companies like WeWork and Uber. If a lot of these companies just start folding and the tech uh, market sinks, then eventually you're going to have uh, an influx of, of really you know high-end, educated developers. And for the most part, those self-taught guys and girls are not going to have nearly the opportunity that they used to have. So what, what I'm trying to say is that we could be living in a golden age and you want to make sure that you're always future-proofing your career to make sure that you're not wasting your time and you're learning the next best thing. So when it comes to wasting time, I see like so like I don't watch YouTube guys. I never did. Uh, I watch YouTube now as a YouTuber and I did like briefly get into the new Boston when I decided to make a YouTube channel nearly seven years ago, but I never watched any YouTube videos in order to learn how to code. The online video tutorials weren't nearly as, um, I wouldn't, there wasn't, there wasn't as many of them seven years ago. Now we have quite a vast array of different uh, tutorials and things that you can watch, but you really don't need any tutorials at all. Like if I'm going to learn Django web development, I don't even need to know Python in advance. You could literally walk through this line by line of their official documentation, which is going to be um, more in depth and probably more up to date than any video you're going to find out there, including, you know, programming books and stuff like that. So the official documentation is where you go, but you hone your skills in on one thing. So if it's web development, pick your stack, start building a project. Don't waste like a day watching Chris Hawks or anybody else on a tutorial series. You're not really going to get anywhere. You get somewhere by actually building stuff, by breaking it. And you'll know when, that you're getting somewhere when at the end of the day, or you've been doing things for six hours, seven hours, and then you're just like, fuck me, why doesn't this work? Fuck, I can't figure this out. That's usually when you need to get a break because that, that means that you've probably done as much as you possibly can do that day. The next day you'll be golden though. You're gonna look at your code, you're gonna look at what you did, and you're gonna be like, wow, I was like really struggling with this one part and I couldn't just step away from that. Now I can just write it this, this, and this, and it'll you know either bypass that issue or it fixes the issue or there's so many different ways that you can skin this cat called programming. Um, one of the things that you do to help yourself, though, is to not waste your time doing learning things you don't need to learn. And, um, and especially watching idiot YouTubers, too, that, like, literally don't have jobs in this field and don't know anything about working on a team and develop. Like, I just – there's so much of that. I think for the beginner developers that are actually, like, turning to YouTube, all the best programmers aren't on YouTube, really, um, for the most part. Now, there's some good guys. Brad Traversi, my friend. Um, I like Syntax. Like a lot of a lot of great programmers are on YouTube. But most of like the, the actual game changing dudes who are actually writing libraries, like the people writing Node, Go, uh, people working at Google and Facebook. And I mean, they'll do some small videos here and there, like Dan Abramoff or whatever. But I mean, these people are busy doing other things. So it's like that's what you need to be doing as well. You need to be busy building whatever project you're working on. For instance, today, I ended up spending probably four or five hours, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And I simply wrote a program that is able to give me video suggestions and ideas based on what's going on on YouTube without me having to watch the garbage. So I find it helpful that I can just have a, a program that I wrote that says, hey, find me all the hot keywords, find me all this and that. And then there's nothing wrong with that. It's like, what is trending? But I don't want to watch it all. I don't, like, I, I don't have time for all that. So I coded it. That makes me feel good. Those types of small things, I think, bring me out of burnout because I'm like, you know what? And that's just one small example of something that I could build that makes my life easier. I could probably sell it too one day if I ever spend enough time doing it. But that's really not the goal that I'm after. My goal is like, what are people talking about on YouTube without me having to watch it all? And how can I go ahead and make some videos to make sure that I'm connecting to my audience? So that's really what I'm doing. And it seems like a lot of you guys definitely ask about how do I learn this and how do I learn it as quickly as possible? And I'm just simply telling you guys, you find a project you want to build and you go to the official documentation. If it's something like um, like game development, people will say, oh, you got to learn linear algebra 
and uh, like this, this, and this, and all this other stuff to get into game development. I would say don't waste your time on that either. Like, don't go to math.com and start doing a bunch of math skills and stuff like that to try to get you up to some area where you can understand vertices in a, an array or whatever. Like, you, you, or, you know, obviously basic geometry, X, Y, Z. Like, you, you could like actually go to 3JS and like it gives you definitions of things like what a frustrum is and all this stuff. And, you learn the math as you go. Like I do Lambda calculus as a programmer, Boolean logic. Those are things that all programmers do. We use terms like variables and statements. And the, the, the thing is, is like, I didn't go to math to learn that. I learned it as I was programming. So you don't have to really understand that stuff to get into this. Um, you, you're going to understand programming the more you program. So if you're watching somebody else program, you're not really learning effectively i mean you should if you're gonna watch somebody you watch somebody you watch what they do and then you turn it off and and try to do what they did and then start ramming your head into a wall when you realize oh shit i don't even know how a for loop works or i don't know how uh key values work or dictionaries and um that's how you learn really and um that's about it guys so yeah just protect your time there's uh there was a programmer i was reading about he was a big guy, a uh, big uh, Node.js developer, and he ended up going to the Go community. He's actually one of the most followed developers on GitHub. His name is TJ. I don't ha have any idea how you would pronounce that last name without butchering it, so I'm not even going to try. But like I said, he was one of the biggest developers in the Node.js community. He went over to Go. He um, is in the top 10 most followed GitHub developers in the world. And... Although I, I will tell you as a side note to that, um, the number seventh most followed person on uh, GitHub, and this this is why like you can't ever look at stats almost on anything because it can be just garbage, is Siraj Raval, believe it or not. A guy that is a plagiarist and completely lied and fabricated all his skills and everything. He is the seventh most followed developer on GitHub. But... That said, he's only one He's only one in the top 10 as far as I can tell. That's a complete fake. TJ is definitely not. But one of the reasons why I mentioned TJ and, and time is because he has this great uh, comment on Quora where they asked, uh, has TJ been as prolific in Golang as he was in the Node.js community? And then he answered his own question. He says, or he didn't ask the question, but somebody did. And he said, nope, I have zero intention to be. My new goal is to live a better life. In the end, open source doesn't pay the bills. So it's best to focus on other things if you can or just enjoy the project if you think it's cool. So uh, that's what I, kind of what I say as well. Like when I get into game development, I, I do it because I think it's cool. I don't expect to be like the next big game developer. There's just too much of a hurdle there and I don't have enough time. But if I ever got rich like web programming, maybe I could focus on game development. Or if you guys, if I got every one of my subscribers to donate a dollar a year, you guys could allow me to uh, pursue my dream to be a game developer or just walk around in the woods with my dog and, and vlog all day long. But until that happens, uh, I have to continue to work and I don't want to waste my time. But I love what he says. Um, he just basically says that he only codes about two or three hours a day. And, uh, and for the most part, that's about what I do too. And I think uh, that's probably the best way to avoid burnout in the long run but he's a he's a great developer so make sure you guys are guarding your time wisely and i think just go in and start building that project and don't worry about what everybody else is doing